Hey everybody, it's Mike from Land and Custom Classics here. Got a little video for you today. Got some new wheels for the old uh, Ford pickup. This is a 76 F-150. And we're going to put some new aluminum wheels on it. Let's go around and take a look, see what we got here. Okay, this is, a, this is one of my favorite old trucks. Got some big 35 inch mudders on there. As you can see, my wheels are rust into pieces. Here soon, I might have some rust through. And then we'll have uh, flat tires. Some of them aren't too bad. Here, we'll show you what we got going on here. My little brother gave me these. Needed to get the right lug nuts for them though. A lot of people, they think they need deeper studs or longer studs to go through here so you got enough uh, thread to hook on to but I'll show you got these nuts for this style a wheel just picked these up at O'Reilly's about eight dollars for one of these four packs and it comes with the washer you're gonna set the washer in here and then this uh, long part of the lug nut here actually goes through so all that's grabbing threads so Let's uh, get these pulled out. I'm going to get, uh, you got to do it in the right order so you get the right wheel on. So first, we're going to take off these. And we're going to take the tire off these wheels so we don't have to cha change it twice. Always start with the wheels you're going to get rid of. And then I can pop the tires off these and then put my new ones right onto them the the thing here is a little different about this video these smaller normal tires are fairly easy to change these big ones can really be a, a wrestling match so let's see how it goes i already got my uh jack positioned under here i got my milwaukee 18 volt impact sitting up there so we'll uh get these back two pulled off over the tire machine and i'll see you over there okay guys so what i did i bought this little uh, tire changer it's all manual the air popper for the other side doesn't work that's the bead breaker for the other side i got this little hand one that goes on here the first thing you're going to want to do i got one done so it's ready you turn these around you need one of these little valve tools here I'll show you this is a three-way one and you can use it as a cap on one of your wheels to keep track of it i just keep it here with my tire machine this one screws inside the valve stem so you can screw it in there and pull the new valve stem in there this is the little one it has a little gap on there that's for pulling the old valve stem i already have this one pulled so we can get going on it but oh yeah, you're just going to want to take your cap off and then stick this in here and turn it righty tighty, lefty loosey. We're going to go counterclockwise with her there. This is the actual valve, the other piece is the valve stem. This goes in there and this is what holds your air in. See if we can get up here on it. This little cap here, when you push in on this with the compressor, it lifts that back part up, lets the air in, and then when you let off, it closes. It's got a little rubber seal on there also. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go grab my Milwaukee toolbox real quick. Because these have metal valve stems on them, and the ones I'm putting on have the long rubber ones, which sometimes you can get those caught on something and rip them, and they weather rot and stuff like that. I kind of prefer these metal ones, so I'm going to take them out and see if the rubbers are good and everything. We'll use them on the new ones. So I'll be right back. I'll pause you guys. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. This is the only one I have with a cap, and it's all rusty. We'll just leave that here. We're going to look at this and the deeper part of the wheel. This is very shallow here. On the back here, see it's real deep. You want to take it off the shallow side. 
So we're going to put it deep side up first. Put our little, there's a little arm thing on here that holds it in place there. It's just a little spring loaded wheel pops in the hole. Spin that on. We don't need it real tight for now. We're just breaking the bead. Okay. Get that on the outside of the wheel right there. Throw our weight on there. Sometimes you gotta move around. Like I say, these are really big tires, so they can be more of a pain, and they're a lot heavier and harder to manhandle. Okay. And then where my pliers at? I got some pliers here for wheel weights. I go around and collect all the old wheel weights off old garbage wheels and stuff we have around here. Keep them in a pile so if I do balance my wheels and do it, I usually check them. These suckers have like 40 of these glue on ones in or stick on ones inside here. <laughs> we might have to take them and get balanced. I really don't want to do too much. They had a ton of weight on this, so <sighs> got that ready. Get that off. Flip this over. <clears throat> Again, I didn't really need to do it on the first one. Line the little deal up in the hole there. You also want to check your wheels. Depending on how wide your wheels are, you might need uh, a bigger wheel for wider tires. And a lot of time you can fit them on a smaller wheel. It actually makes them sit a little different. So you change your stance up a little bit with that. Like I said, this side should pop easy. It's the shallow side, okay? Now we're gonna get all these wheel weights off. We got a dozen million wheel weights on here. Now a lot of the time I don't ever balance my tires. When I get done, I usually take them out on the highway and nine times out of 10, they'll ride just fine, no issues. Every once in a while you have one give you some trouble. Then if you want, this is the easy part. A lot of people don't have a balancer. I have a little old uh, bubble balancer. I did a video on that before. You can look that up. Uh, you're gonna push down on this, get it into that groove. You wanna make sure this is out right. I got a, a spot here I need to take care of. A little sharp, you don't want to catch your bead. These ones aren't the worst. I've had some way worse than this. Just gonna get that little roller in there. See when I broke the bead, I kind of stuck it back on on the other side. There it goes. And get that up into the groove. Slide this on. Make sure you don't start by your valve stem. You can damage it. Okay. Let's pull this around. Oh, you know, probably know I'm not a weakling. These are some heavy tires. Now I got my 916ths on my ratchet here. The rubbers aren't looking worn. The inside looks like brand new. I think we'll get these valve stems and pray that they fit right or I'm gonna have to run to the auto parts store. Either way, I at least want shorter valve stems and make them all all different lengths jiggle that a little i will make sure that's clean i'll put a little soap on this too to help it seat this is the solid metal valve stem and then this nut goes on the outside it bolts in there and this little seal here keeps it airtight so they're usually a pretty good way to go a lot more spendy price wise they cost a good bit more than your little rubber ones knock that off ready to go most tires 
will come off on the outside where this is on the outside on your vehicle most tires will come off this way there are some wheels that are fatter on this side just depends on the offset and a lot of other things so put those over there okay now we'll grab one of these should have checked that I think there's a little air in this again we'll do the valve stem on here depending on how long the video is I might just get this one done and we'll call it a, a video if not we'll do two just for fun I want to take you over and show you some things on the uh, truck but like I said we'll probably just do one tire because y'all don't want to watch me do the same thing four times and if you keep your videos shorter usually you get better retention see this is a different type of valve I don't like this one for one a little rubber piece is missing on here you want to inspect all that a little rubber piece is supposed to be right here to seal it when you screw it in then this piece is just kind of hanging open but I think this hits in the bottom on something and runs the spring that way but like I say with that rubber missing don't reuse that so okay now <clears throat> we'll uh, so get the flip this over. Sometimes I don't even suck them down to do this. I'm gonna go around here. But if y'all really pay attention, I usually do this faster than the guys at the tire shop. They got the fancy mechanical machines that are all all air powered or whatnot. Some are air power, some are electric. The majority of the old ones are all air powered. Just have a compressor line that hooks it. Yeah, that's for sure the deep side. It's kind of weird on these ones. It bevels in so you can't really see the other side. <laughs> oh, since we're fighting it, Gonna tighten this side, okay? Pop that in there. Pop that real quick. Get our bar. Okay, old tire. That one had a crack in the sidewall, some of them we use for old trailer tires. Now we're going to take the knife real quick, get on the back of this valve stem, just cut it off. It's got a little fat booty part on here that catches it on the inside. It's a real fat end. Cut that off real quick to pull right out. Okay, now we're going to take our new one. Presser in here. Plenty thick there. Put that baby on there. These are even tilted in more. So it'll really keep them out of the way of hitting any obstruction and uh, having a problem. There are times, especially if you're rock crawling, either one can be real dangerous. But, uh, you hit that real hard on a rock, you can break that off too. Just got a brand new Milwaukee ratchet. I broke my old one. Working on my dad's new truck project. Took it into Home Depot, no questions. They just switched it right out for a new Milwaukee ratchet. Okay, you want that pretty tight. Yep, she's squeezed in there good. All the rubber is still in it. You don't want to torque it to where the rubber comes out. I got a whole assortment of these different colored valve caps. I'm going to use the black ones on this to match my truck. The other thing you want to make sure you pay attention to, I don't remember if they even asked me. I'm going to do this to stand out. On the outside of this tire, this side, the letters are black. You almost can't see them kind of proud of these tires they're dang good tires I love them so far 
The other side, usually you'll have white letters. Some will have a white wall. So if you want them flashy, you put this side out. If you want them plain, put the other side out. You've got your whole truck blacked out, whatever. Might look better with black. Like I say, it kind of stands out like this. If you want to make sure you get the side you want out on all of your tires. <laughs> Don't want to get them on there and realize you put the black on one side. Okay, now, what do I do with it? Can't find my spray bottle. I must have left it by the compressor. Okay, so here's our sprayer we're going to use to lubricate these so they go on easier and make sure they take a good bead. You want to look on here, make sure the bead's all clean. Go around it. If it's not all clean and smooth, a lot of time a wire wheel is the best thing to take around there and clean it off. Now we're going to take and spray this rubber on the side we're putting it on. We're going to spray around there with some soap. Just helps it, and it, it's so slick, it helps them slide on the wheel better too, so you don't have to fight them as much. Okay. Then we're going to set her on there how we want. I like to start right on the other side of my valve stem so I never put my tool near it so I can't tear it. And we'll get one side in and then we'll worry about it. Got a little cup on here. This cup grabs the outside of the wheel. You want this roller, so you need to get me some good roller bearings or something put on there. You want the, the bead of your tire sitting on this roller. My little brother does these all the time, was fighting some, didn't even know that. I kind of showed him. So, you can pop this on as much as you can first. Put this around here. Push her on as much as you can. And you're going to want it in the groove. See, this one's trying to come off my roller and stuff there because it's at such an angle because the tire is so tall. Yeah, work that on there. A few little pumps there. You don't want to force it too hard though. Can't emphasize enough. Get your bead inside the rim. There's a little in, indented part there. You want the bead inside that or you will tear your bead. And there goes, uh, these are probably 300, $350 piece tires. Pretty well buy a set for most of my cars for what one of these costs. Like I say, I'm, see I'm getting my whole body into this. And I gotta get that down in there. Lost it off my roller again. I like to get a little taller roller. Uh, my cousin over Barrow's garage, his dad has an air power machine that he got. They rebuilt. They're very handy. Popped out again. Try to chase it from behind. Get on it again there. Say so this is where you're fighting because that bottom part's pushing up on me. Lift your bar a little there. It'll press it into that little little hole there. As long as this video is, <laughs> definitely only doing one tire. I forgot to put my stuff on this side. We're still going to do it because it helps it slide on the bead. So if you don't get that bead set good on clean metal, your tire will leak heard a lot of dumb people say you have to put a can of fix a flat in them they just didn't know what they were doing Get my bar here knock this off okay so we're gonna grab this tire i'm just gonna take it over the compressor fill it with air this one's so wide you don't have a problem getting them on the bead it's already kind of smashed in there and then I'll meet you guys over at the truck and we'll put it on and I'll explain more about the lug nuts and different types there. So just stay with me here. Have a good learning experience. I'll take one of these black caps with me. 
good metal caps they don't weather rot and such okay so one thing i failed to mention another good part about the uh using your dish soap around your uh bead as you can see if you have any leaks if you want you can put it around your valve and inside your valve and it'll bubble all out if you have any problems you hear my little chicken red here she's uh talking to me too now i got some different uh lugs here to show you on most of your standard wheels you use a closed one like this a lot of time you put them on good and dry and you keep the moisture out of them they're good if they get moisture in them they can lock on pretty hard this is just your standard little lug nut when you put this on you want about a quarter inch or so of threads coming through it just to make sure you don't break your lug off and it's on there properly and then these are the ones that fit inside these holes on these i also got this to show you when you're doing this put them on something clean so you don't get dirt inside here especially some of the really fine thread ones a little dirt in there can mess up your threads and really lock them on there also so we got that ready we're gonna get this into position here these are heavy tires so let me get her kind of lined up there see i get you over here for a better view show you a little trick to putting these on here so you're not fighting it so hard get you over the side okay let's see here so one thing you can do to help you here get all your stuff set up here i can usually just throw them on no problem but if you're not a crazy farm boy kind of see how your lugs are get your tire up there put your feet under it and then you can lift it up with your feet okay now here's why i got these lug nuts one they make the hole wider for these wheels so that's what they're meant to have as you can see i barely have any thread coming out of the hole these are threaded all the way to the end so i'm going to catch all those threads inside there okay and get one of these on I'm gonna get it started on here hopefully these are these are a pain <laughs> gotta lift it a little or something to get it on there sometime and you gotta get the, the lug nut you gotta get the lug started in the hole okay you always want to make sure you get them a good bit so that when you hit them with the impact if you're using one they'll uh tear all the threads and cross thread them ruin the whole lug real quick and replacing the lug isn't a whole lot of fun this other top one so you want to get them started in good ways okay and then you're doing it right you always want to take a torque wrench and check the torque afterwards because you don't get a real specific torque with a torque with a impact and now they're going on easy because i got them all set in there the top one's still being a little bit of a bugger okay now get out Ugh. got our impact set on number two put it to forward and don't go all the way in with them work them in first make sure they're all lined up and even oh these little chrome caps fall off that's not good well those are kind of cheap didn't even really do anything just broke it off now what i'll probably do is knock the rest of them off so they match <laughs> If I had an extra, I'd switch it. I don't have an extra. If you don't put the uh, washer on also, 
You won't be able to get a socket in there. You'd have to get a super thin walled one to try to get it out. These are meant to use as a washer. You're gonna do these in a star pattern. And when you retorque them later, you're also gonna go in a star pattern, go from here to here. Then I'll go across and go to there. Then I'll go back to this. One. Got them all good and tight there. Okay, so here we go. Got them all on there. I actually took one of the old lug nuts that were just a little rusty and put on there where the one's cap fell off. Figured that'd be better than breaking the caps off all of them. <laughs> Might have just been one flawed. One other quick little thing to go with you guys. Um, always inspect your tire. If your tire starts to wear in the middle, you have too much pressure in it. And if you start wearing on both sides, but not the middle, then you're under pressure. So make sure you watch that and keep your pressure right so that they uh, wear evenly, then they'll last you longer. Another thing is uh, always on your newer cars, mostly look inside your door. There's a actual recommendation for tire pressure. Look, this one looks a lot better. I gotta take it to the car wash. But, um, like my, a lot of people I know, they just look at the tire and it says like max PSI 80, so they'll fill it to 80. And then it rides like hell. And on your car, with the weight that your car weighs, it's going to give you that off, uh, it's going to give you that uneven wear. So make sure you run the, the recommended pressure. I run about 32 pounds in this, 34 pounds. I don't really haul a whole lot with it. It's mostly just a work truck. I use it off-road to go do jobs out on uh, people's farms and stuff. So if you hadn't seen it, there's my old 1950 Oldsmobile rocket hood ornament I got from my buddy Walt that has the old vintage car junkyard. Like I say, we've got this all set up. Got a little light bar on there. 12,000 pound uh, Harbor Freight winch that I put on there, Badlands. So I gotta get some bolts for my KC lights up there on top. They're, uh, the bolts come loose so the, the pods are just kind of flopping around. <laughs> I also gotta get my fish tape out and uh, run wire through the little kind of fake roll bar thing. These aren't a real roll bar where they're just bolted to the top of the bed. They have to go down and mount to the frame or when you roll that's just gonna fold the bed up. It doesn't really help much. It's just for looks, but like I say, this used to be a, uh, belonged to a sheriff's office. It was a search and rescue truck. So it's had some stuff done to it and it's a pretty nice old truck. So, well, thanks for tuning in everybody. Please like, comment, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, always out to help people working on their cars so they do things right. Cause that's the important part, making sure it's done right and safe. So. Thank you all for watching. Catch you on the next one.